Hi, welcome back. In this sixth video of using Microsoft Excel Solver for linear programming, we are going to talk about a very important topic, shadow price. Uh, our assumptions before we go ahead. We are assuming that you know how to formulate a simple linear programming and we are also assuming that you know how to use Microsoft Excel Solver for a simple linear programming. In case you need help for using Microsoft Excel Solver, you may refer to any of the previous videos 1 to 3. Let's jump into the problem that we used. Our favorite maze furnitures. They make two products, tables and chairs, using two resources, machine M1 and machine M2. The table here gives the need of the products on the machine M1. For, so one unit of table needs seven hours on M1 and five hours on M2 and so on. Uh, the constraints, the machine M1, the maximum capacity available is 200 hours and on machine M2 the maximum capacity available is 400 hours. We formulate it, write the formulas and then go to data, solver and ask it to solve to give us an answer of maximum contribution as 1500 rupees and the decision is that you would make 50 chairs and no tables. Perfect. Now let's look at the constraints. The resource M1 the maximum capacity is 200 units and we use up 200 units. So this is called as a binding constraint. For machine M2, while there are 400 units available, we use up only 250 units. This is called as a non-binding or a slack constraint. Now, if additional capacity of machine M2 was available in the market, it does not make sense for the company to go out and buy this extra capacity because as it is there is some extra capacity available with the firm but if additional capacity of machine M1 were to be available it might make sense for the firm to go out and buy because it's a binding constraint and if we increase this it might increase the objective function. So what are we saying here is that the additional units of non-binding constraints are practically useless but additional units of binding constraints may improve the objective function. Let's try it out. Let's increase the capacity of M1 from 200 to 201 units and then we go to data, solver and solve the problem. What we see is that our objective, the contribution, goes up from 1500 rupees to 1507.5 an increase of 7.5 rupees. Let's try to increase it by 2 units, 202. And then we go to data, solver, solve it again. It goes up by 15 units. So when contribution went up by 1 unit, sorry, the capacity of machine M1 went up by 1 unit, the contribution went up by 7.5 units. When it went up by 2 units, the contribution went up by 15 units. So for every unit increase of M1, the contribution goes up by 7.5 units. Let's check if this is true in reverse. Why don't you pause the video here and Check it out for yourself. Does it work when the capacity reduces by one unit? Alright, let me do it here. I reduce the capacity by one unit, 299 from the original 200. And if everything works out, our contribution must be equal to 1500, which was the original contribution, minus 7.5. So it should equal 1492.5. Let's check it out. We go to data, solver, solve. Wonderful. So this number of 7.5 units is what we call as the shadow price. The shadow price is the change in objective function for unit change of the constraint or unit change of the binding constraint. It's also called as a worth of the resource. So an increase of one unit of resource is worth 7.5 rupees for me in terms of my contribution. And if an extra unit of this resource was available in the market, 
7.5 rupee is the maximum I would pay to get this resource. Now, one thing we're ignoring here is that I know we cannot make decimal number of chairs. 49.75 chairs is not possible. But we are just looking at the concept of linear of uh, uh, shadow prices here. So I think we can work around with that. Uh, do we always have to increase? No. Excel helps us here. Let's try to do it. I take this back to the original 200. Go to data. Solver. Solve. And now I'll ask solver to give me sensitivity in addition to the answer. And say OK. What we see here is a sensitivity report sheet. When I look at it further, it says that for machine M1, the shadow price is 7.5 units. Obviously, the M2 would not have um, shadow price because we have excess or spare resource. Now, this 7.5, I repeat, is the shadow price of this constrained machine M1. Thank you.